Programming used to be a skill that was reserved for those who could afford to pay for super expensive computer science degrees at expensive universities. But today, that is no longer the case. Using the internet and the abundance of resources online, which are often completely free, literally anyone with an internet connection can learn to code and with the use of AI and other tools, it can be done extremely quickly as well. And I can tell you as someone who did this, when I learned to code in just four months and landed my first job as a software engineer, I used pretty much exclusively free resources. Now, now that I do have money, if I was starting over, I would pay for stuff like this value in saving your time in exchange for money, but many people simply don't have that much money. You might not have money to invest into paid resources. So in this video, I'm going to give my top five free resources to learn to code in 2024 and 2025 so that anyone who watches this video can just pick up these resources, learn to code and become a software engineer. And there is zero excuse why you cannot do this. The first of these resources is called CS50. Now, this is where I think almost everyone should start when you're first learning to code. This is like the entry point into not just coding, but computer science that will make you appreciate and understand just how cool and interesting this field that you're getting into is developed by Harvard University. And I believe it's like the first course of the actual Harvard computer science degree that they've simply decided to put out there online for free so that anyone can just get started with computer science which is so cool this course when you go through it it's by the way very very difficult like you will be challenged but i think that is a good thing because it will make you understand from the get-go that coding is not easy computer science is not easy and this is going to be a challenging process but what this course will do is it will make you excited about the process of learning to code and about computer science it will make you just appreciate how insanely cool it is that we have these things called computers that we can just program to do whatever we want and if it wasn't for this program i might have never for example started this youtube channel because i would have never had the appreciation for just how awesome coding is if i never did this course so i cannot recommend this course enough you absolutely should go do it it's available for completely free at the harvard university website and by the way on this youtube channel i have a full review of this course that's one of the earliest videos on this channel actually so you'll see a bit of a quality difference but i highly recommend you go watch it for more details on a cs50 and by the way after you go through this they have like many other programs they have cs50 web development cs50 python everything like this so after this you can just continue from this but the only con here is that you can't really become an employable developer just with cs50 courses because these are designed to be introductory courses but nevertheless a great place to start for completely free and the second resource is called the Odin project now this is another course like a program now if you have no money you don't have any money to invest and you want to specifically become a web developer this is what i would do and this is also what i did when i was first learning the code myself i wanted to learn web development back-end development and front-end development and i found this program online it's extremely great for what you pay for which is obviously nothing you get essentially absolutely everything you need for to learn html css and javascript script as well as back-end development and you can just sort of choose what you want to specialize in whether you want to specialize in back-end or front-end or what you get a great introduction into just how the web works in general i think in this day and age understanding how things work behind the scenes is more and more important because the actual process of writing code is now so much easier with AI and modern tools and things like this. The only con is that because it is free, this is only like a text-based resource. It's not the most engaging. Like you won't find any ways for you to reach out if you have problems. Obviously, these are the benefits you would have if you had a paid program. But given it's free, it's the best web development program out there in my opinion. The next free tool is Notion. Now, this is not a course per se, but more like a tool that I have used from day one of learning to code, sort of act as my companion to store my notes, to store my project ideas, to like collaborate on projects with everyone else. And it's been an absolute game changer, not just for learning to code, but also for essentially managing my entire life, from my businesses to my finances and everything, and even videos on this YouTube channel. And you'll find more detailed videos on how to use Notion and everything like this on YouTube. I have made, I believe, two different guides, one on 
how I use Notion to take notes and learn to code, and another one on how I built an entire productivity system for myself in Notion specifically as a programmer. What's also great about Notion is that you can create your own templates. For example, I have created my own template that I used myself to learn computer science for completely free, where I essentially compiled a list of computer science courses that are free online into essentially a free online computer science degree curriculum that is simply put on a Notion template that anyone can copy paste. So basically the way it works is that I have these different sections for different sections of a computer science degree with all the courses that you need to go through with the links to the courses and everything like that. And you can sort of move them on this board based on your status, whether you're doing it right now, or whether it's completed. And then inside of all these pages for these courses, you can have your notes for these courses. So if you want that course, you can get it for completely free by signing up to my newsletter down below in the description. And what's also super cool about Notion these days is Notion AI. Now I've used Notion AI for a long time and they've recently just released their new Notion AI that is much more powerful than the previous version. So what you can do with this new Notion AI is, for example, search for stuff from your entire Notion catalog. And with the new Notion AI, it has a lot more context than the previous one. For example, if you have connected your Notion to Google Drive or Slack, Notion AI will have access to your Slack discussions. And it will, for example, remember updates to Google Slides presentations that you might have done. And this will help you create high quality work using AI within Notion because it understands sort of the entire context of all these different tools where you have your data. And just a couple of use cases specifically for programming. Now, I use it a lot for notes, like project ideas. So let's say you've gone through an entire course that you've written notes on. You can then ask Notion AI to quiz you based on those notes to see if you remember the details. Or when you've created a page for a new project, you can use the Notion AI chatbot to get some ideas or pull instructions from online on how to get started with it or something like that. And if you've written down some code into your notes, you can use the writing assistant to ask it to improve the code or for your notes, you might ask it to expand the notes to add some more relevant information that you perhaps missed in your own notes. You can even use it to analyze and summarize PDFs and images. So you can get started with Notion for completely free and you can unlock the new Notion AI for only $10 a month by following the link down below in the description. Thank you again for Notion for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's move on to the fourth tool, which is Coursera. Now, not every course in Coursera is free, but a lot of them are. And what many people don't know is that many of these, while they might be paid for the actual certificate, they are free to audit. And this is also where I personally learned so many different things. Like this is really good if you're learning something specific, and especially if it's a bit more technical, like you really want to understand data structures and algorithms, for example, they have great data structure and algorithms courses on Coursera that you can audit for free. If you want to get started with a new programming language, you can do it. And this is more like university-esque style of education. So whether you like that or not depends on you. But again, an amazing resource for you to find a ton of resources for completely free or pretty cheap if they don't have the free audit option. I found it particularly useful, for example, for machine learning. Some of the best machine learning courses out there from absolute top minds in the entire industry are available for completely free on Coursera, which is just so incredibly cool. So another one you should check out is definitely Coursera. And the fifth one is obviously YouTube, where you are right now. And I was just talking to a friend earlier that I think the best university in 2025 is not actual universities, it is YouTube. YouTube is the best teacher on everything. The sheer amount of free tutorials, crash courses, and in-depth guides on programming is just staggering. And it's insane that we have this tool where all of this is available for us for completely free. Obviously, the con with YouTube is that you sort of have to search through it. You might have to search through a lot of bad information. Like if you stumble across a channel like this one, I'm just kidding. I think my videos are okay. But if you do that, you can learn pretty much anything for free on YouTube. But really what I would actually say is that YouTube is a great tool for learning something specific. And when you're getting started to sort of get the lay of the land of the tech industry, sort of what is going on, what people are saying, but I actually would warn you against getting stuck into the YouTube algorithm of just watching more and more YouTube videos, like watching every video on my channel, for example, and thinking that you're doing work because actually the best teacher of coding is none of these five resources. And it's also completely free. It is, can you guess what it is? It is building projects. No matter which resource you use, whether you pay for it, whether it's free, none of it will work if you don't actually build projects. Resources, whether free or paid, are just 
tools to help you sort of hold your hand in the beginning. It's sort of how you learn how to ride a bike when you're a kid. You might have those training wheels attached to your bike in the beginning, and that will help you sort of get started. So you get the hang of like the basics of how to ride a bike. But the way you really learn how to ride a bike is when your dad takes off the training wheels and just puts you out there on your own to ride. You might fall a couple of times, it might even hurt, it might be annoying, but that is a necessary part of the process. So never, never forget that you have to go out there, do stuff on your own, or you will never learn to code. If you're looking for ideas, I recommend you watch this video right here, where I give you three amazing ideas that you can get started with right now as a complete beginner, specifically in Python. With that said, I will see you in the next video.